All right, welcome back to the analyst desk here. We have our first matchup of the day. It is going to be Micklin Heroes taking on Stargaze. This is the set to see who gets the, the honor, the glory to face the titans of whole lot of rage. So should be pretty good, should be pretty hype. And we got 60 seconds to the first matchup. Predictions have started and I'll go to you first. Lumi, who are you predicting in this set? I mean, honestly, I don't know who I am rooting for. I mean, if I had to say objectively, I think probably Micklin does have a slight advantage here, but I can see it going either way. I mean, both of these teams have been around for a while. They've been practicing. We've seen they've had similar results throughout the league. And I think it's going to be one of our more balanced matchups today. I mean, the other one is pretty balanced, too, between Jackpot and Squidding Good. But this one's also going to be really interesting. I hope we see back and forth. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. But I hope Mixlin can come out. But I can see Stargaze upsetting this. Yeah. Well, IPS, we've got 20 seconds till game number one. Who are you putting your channel points on? Where's your money? I'm saying Mecklen. You know, like I do believe yeah, Stargaze is still a solid team, but I feel like they're still kind of the lowest of pro level. Meanwhile, Mecklen has like had a lot more upsets. They've been in teams like Hanran before. So right now, right here, I do believe they are the better team, and I do believe they will take this set. But if Stargaze has one advantage right now, is that Mecklen, I think, is not really a team anymore. So <laughs> Stargaze take advantage of that and, you know, definitely take advantage of that and just be like hey we're an actual team so let's get a double year as we are going into splat zone sturgeon shipyard and looking at both of these teams comps we see the usual stargaze comp you know we got that heavy damage weapon coming from me with that k pro we got jb on the shot squib on the support with the junior asteroid who i believe is vesta on that fire from charger and then on the side of micklin heroes we see the ball points by the definitely not a rated back line coming out of that the 52 zap and machine and already Lumi, we're just seeing like micklin getting the first control of the game i mean yeah you see they're doing a really good job i mean stargaze is Dang defensive, they do get those two kills, and that's gonna really help them push back and trying to find some kills. And there's a triple on Micklin. All right now, now the uh, Stargate's taking back control here with the last person jumping out. And JP on this shot has been raping some work, but he does go down to pass on this sap. And this might be Micklin already getting back in, maybe with that Booyah Bomb here. Armor nearly at the ready too, and yeah, Zone is going to flip. Like you said before, this map just flips and flips and flips. No one ever has complete control of the whole game un unless they get complete control of that court. You know, but Caster maybe going for some picks, isn't going to find any. Armor coming out for both teams now, and a pick does go down, and uh, Lumi, this might be a Stargate's chance to push back in again. You see, yeah, they do have the Booyah coming out. They have specials ready. They can come back here, and especially on a map this small, and you see this three down. See, this is their chance to come back. These Stargazers are just keeping hold of the zone. They have a yes. lot of paint on the ground, too. That's going to help their Slayers. Yeah, for sure. It seems like right now, uh, this might be the chance for Stargazers to do what they really need to do, or in general, like one of these teams to do, is just get complete control and get that lockout going, which is really hard on this map until you get those picks in that core. And we see right now, you're going to watch this left side. Does get to pick up the ball point. Really good to come by Yi here. This is going to slow down. Micklin here is supposed to start to go in, which that Fade 2 is going to try to do with that Booyah Bomb, with some help, with the Zap. JB going in, pick by Yi on that 52. Really good pick. Cast now on this Zap, trying to get out. We maybe get the country. The JB does go down, but Yi with another Three pick. Three down again. on Micklin. And Yi right now popping off for Stargaze, getting those picks. You see, there's only just a few seconds left. They have to go in now, or it's going to be the end of the match. And if you're trying to find some picks, but it's going to be the game. Well, uh... <laughs> Stargaze already proven uh, our predictions wrong. Getting the first game on Micklin Heroes, and, you know, Yi proving that pretty convincingly as well. Popping off, getting a really good triple there near the end of the game. Like, yeah, this is going to be definitely closer than I thought, honestly. I mean, Stargaze is one of those teams that if they're on one of their good days, they're hard to stop. You saw the momentum. It was just too much for Micklin there. Just pick after pick and just keeping them weak. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Seems like Yeet, Yeet was yeeting. Is that, can you even say Yeet, Yeet was yeeting? Is that a thing, guys? Uh, 
We made it so <laughs> funny. Not anymore. We're ask him. <laughs> Luke, so funny, guys. Oh my gosh. Luke makes me laugh out loud. I mean, to be fair, he he was popping off. How can I say popping off? At least is that is that okay? You can. <laughs> okay. I mean, you you seem to dominate on that uh, that pro there, really taking down Micklin. So I'm I'm kind of surprised because I was actually the one picking Micklin in the prediction points, but besides the first minute, Stargaze took him took him down pretty easily. It seemed like. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the match, it did seem like Micklin had some sort of advantage. You know, they did get that kind of first control, and they were able to get it back again as well. But after that, it seemed like as soon as Stargaze got a good lockout, it just went downhill once uh, he got that pick on the ball point. Uh, after that, it seemed like uh, Micklin was pretty much stuck on trying to pick off uh, JB, who was just in that core, you know, I was saying uh, I was saying earlier, like getting into that core is really, really important. And he was just there. He was just moving around, just moving, you know, not letting anyone kill him. And that was basically, you know, kind of splitting the focus of uh, Micklin here. And that's one thing you really can't do at this level sometimes. It's getting your focus split. Because if you don't focus on one thing, uh, you know, they're going to do something. What they really wanted to do there was try to, like, focus the shot, get him down quickly so that they could push into, like, a 4v3 situation. But instead, we saw uh, the 52 try to push Yi, and he went down while the rest of his team was still trying to pick off that uh, shot in the back. So, you know. Another gifted sub, too, oh. right before game number two. Just adding and adding to the prize pool is Cherry Girl. So, nice. thank you. Another sub, and it's going to Yeet. Maybe this will cheer on Stargaze as we jump into game number two. Thank you, Cherry. Micklin Hero is trying to tie us up at one to one. Stargaze looking for a 2 0 up on oh. Micklin. So now we're going to Clam Blitz the Reef. Uh, now, comms coming out for both teams. Again, we kind of see uh, actually a bit of a comm change coming out from Stargaze. Yeet still, of course, with that Slayer weapon. But we see Squib switching from armor to Rapid, which means no armor coming out for Stargaze. You know, on the side of Michelin Heroes, the complete opposite, coming out with double armor, maybe to help out that non 52 get some really good picks. And of course, with that tri slash, you know, it's going to be really good on this map, especially with those slopes on bridge. And currently, right now, Lumi seems like neither team has gone complete control here. They're just fighting for bridge. I mean, right now, Stargate isn't having trouble with dancing, and they're just getting picked off. I the rap to go down there, but EV with the machine is doing a good job of stopping momentum. There is a good triple. Yeah, you know, pretty much getting solo defending that push there with his bit help with his teammates. And now, Lau is going to have to back up. And Miklin here is only getting a clam, and you know, in this level of play, getting one clam isn't just enough, especially if you lose mid because of it. And that just lets the other team push back in. But as I say that, it is now a 3 3 situation. So, and now that's two down now for Stargaze. Three down. This is going to be the chance for Miklin here to get another push going, and hopefully a bigger one for them, as they do have 18 clams already, probably trying to build a power soon. As there is a bomber going off behind them from JB, which is going to push them back to bridge. We have bomb also coming out. And right now, Lumi, Miklin Heroes does have the clients, but they can't seem to get past JB Bomb Rush, unfortunately, as he does get another pick. Yeah, you can see they're having trouble advancing. They did have the advantage there, but what happened? I mean, they're three down now. If this is Stargate's chance to push back and maybe take that lead. You see, see a good the, pick yeah. from Lat. Mm -hmm. And now, once again, Stargate just has control of this map right now. It does seem like Miklin's struggling to get a lot of that control. We see now Asteroid on this Charger, maybe looking for a pick, but isn't going to find any yet as his T as Stargaze does start to push up again. They do have 19 Clems to ready with a Power Clem as well, and honestly, if they can get a push going here, I mean, it can be really, really big, but they got to get past that nod, they got to get past that 50 that just jumped out, so that does help a little bit. You know, and right now, honestly, Lumi, it seems like they're kind of waiting for the perfect opportunity, but might, that might be their downfall. Yeah, both of these teams are being very passive right now. They don't want to be too aggressive, but they're also trying to hold their own ground in the middle. But, I mean, you see they, the armor comes out. This is their chance to get the advantage they need. They're trying to get as many points as they can in one go. Mm -hmm, yep, and Bombrush again coming out from JB there. Both teams have so many clans, but neither team is making much of a play. You would expect me, Mick Clanero's trying to make more of those aggressive plays with that Aja, with that Booyah Bomb, with that double armor, just a no backline. They do get the splash though, as Squib does pop baller, is gonna have to back up here. 
Maybe now Lex with this 15 might be able to find the picks they need. Is gonna try to push Asteroid. He is gonna back up. Free bomb coming out from Lex. Asteroid Asteroid gonna make way for their push, but yeah. yes, might go down here and there he goes. He gets it in, popping the armor. That's gonna make way for even more of the push to, to occur. You see the jet trying to find the picks on Eat, but Eat just stays alive with that machine. And there he goes. Yeah. I mean, Micklin is still doing a good job here. Yeah, that is gonna be actually another wipe down on uh, Stargaze. And we may be seeing a KO here if they can get the clamp and hold this as another three clamps coming in from fear that is gonna bring it down to 13. If they can get these the rest of these clamps and try to hold this for Lex, who is gonna come in here, he's gonna go down though. Lao going in for the clamps, gonna get one, he's gonna get two. Oh, one more clam. Just oh, one more and that'll be it. And Cass is gonna try to get it, but it's just too hard. Uh, Cass is going to uh, opt to back up, which is definitely the better player. He does go down still, though, unfortunately. But Micklin Heroes, they waited for that perfect opportunity and eventually got it, bringing it all the way down to one. And with just a minute and 15 left, Stargaze is going to pretty much need either one really, really, really good push, or they're going to have to get a wipe here and make a, two really, really good pushes. So right now, it's looking really tough for them as JB goes down again. And honestly, Lumi, do you think they could come back from this? I mean, I think they still do have the chance. I mean, this is Clam Blitz. One wipe can get you tons of points. We've seen that happen before, but it's really hard. I mean, you can see they have two specials on the side of Nickelodeon. I mean, that's going to be hard to come back with. Mm, definitely. A Sphere here is going to go down to that Torpedo from Squid. Loud jumping in, though. Going to be putting some pressure onto Stargaze with that Power Climb score. Yeah, Star is enough to come back. Script does go down. Lao on this agent, maybe looking for a pick, but he's probably gonna go down though. Lex getting those clamps and bring it down to one with a penalty of six. And the push not getting them the KO, but definitely pretty much wasting Stargaze's time. They do have a pity now though, so they could get up to 21 clams, and that is still not gonna be enough though. They're gonna need around they're gonna need like two power clams and a lot of clams after that, and probably around two wipes, maybe one and a half if they're lucky, but he does go down. Oh, but they're loud with right the kick. Now. That loud getting two, maybe looking for three. Those He's are the picks that they needed. Yeah, overtime right now for Stargaze. I mean, they don't even think they grab the power, and this kind of seems like this might be game here, as there is two v two situation here. So maybe they might be able to get the power in. Cass here gonna just jump over there, maybe trying to score the power coming into the game, but you know the game just ends anyway. So. Game two going to uh, Micklin Heroes, and now we have a tight set. I mean, that match was a lot more passive than our first one. The first one, there was just a lot of kills happening left and right. It just felt like someone was always dead, but on that one, it was just. I mean, of course, you saw a lot more kills coming out. You see JB with 15 on the Ooh. splash, but it just felt like no one really advanced other than Micklin's really strong push there in the middle. Yeah, it seemed like to me, guys, I don't know about you, but Stargaze. Felt like they didn't have anything to really move them forward in the match. There was no agency. It's like they had the the snipe. They had the uh, they had the bomb rush that stopped Micklin a couple times. But other than that, I feel like they had nothing to actually go forward and score with. And that just seemed like a, an odd comp to pick for Clan Blitz to me. Yeah, I mean, they did have that baller and they did have that bomb rush. So there is still things to go in with. But I feel like maybe that lack of armor might have been detrimental for them since Miklun did have two. And this is something that is kind of relevant for, uh, you know, kind of what the level that Stargaze Miklun is at, which is kind of like top, uh, the top of like kind of mid-level. So, of course, uh, they're not as good as Team Storm with WLR and Jackpot, for example, but they still are pretty good, but they still have some issues. And one of those issues kind of sometimes is kind of visual cues to push. This is something that you can notice sometimes where they kind of don't know when to push sometimes of things such as armor because you know i mean if you think about it right when you see armor right you see oh you become flashy you look like you have this <laughs> you look powerful you know so you, <laughs> you go look... in impulsive yeah you go in impulsively to get some picks you know but right. if you don't have that there's not really much of a sign to go in so sometimes that might be affecting stargaze in the sense that they don't really have that visual cue of oh we have armor okay we can go in for picks now and instead, they're going in at random times, which might be, you know, kind of making them play a bit off. So maybe the play is for them to go back to armor again. Because, again, if Micklin, Micklin does go back to double armor as well and stays that for the rest of the set, you know, there is one thing that double armor destroys, and it is no armor comps unless the other team clearly has a complete counter to that armor. 
Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. We do have a 1-1 set now. This is a best of five if you are just tuning in in our pro Splatoon playoff division. I want to say thank you real quick to the followers, LaCroix, Cole, Honor, Lori, and Marti Marticho. I don't know how to say your name. Sorry for butchering it. <laughs> I tried my best. Thank you guys for the follows and tuning into our pro league action. We are in a best of five. We are now heading to game three. It is one to one. Let's jump in to game number three. We're going to Make a Mart Tower Control. Yep. And we're going to be seeing now uh, the comps coming from both these teams. I feel like one thing's going to be important here. Which team really has the more snowball -y comp? And we already see from the side of Micklin Heroes, they have, of course, again, the no back comp. So they're definitely going to be a bit more aggressive. Fear, though, switching to that tri of both. So they're going to have a singular armor this time. And more often for that rain, maybe the pressure on the top left from pushing. Meanwhile, on the side of Micklin, uh, sorry, the side of Stargaze, uh, they're going back towards that junior, but also going for that V splash for that inkjet. Yeet still on the machine. And uh, Lumi, what do you think of these comps? I mean, I think Stargate's doing what they need to do. They have that armor that's going to give them not only the paint they need, but that armor to counter Mixlon. I mean, that was their downfall in the last match. And I think you see, look, Yeet is doing a good job with that machine. Just went for one of the ones. That's what we need here. And you see, they're getting a good start. It's a lot like our first match where they get the good start and they might flip it here, but I think that Ray is just causing trouble for Mixlon. Yeah, we see that Ravenforge is getting picks, but definitely put enough pressure there. Inja coming out from JB does get shut down. Nod does go down though as well, and now Squid getting push is going to go down. And Miklin Heroes now is going to try to take back control of this tower. You try to push up for some more points. Might get picked off here by Lex. Lex finds and gets the pick midair, shooting down that bird. And now Lex with his 52, maybe look for another one. JB does pick him off though. And, you know, Stargaze again That's just three down on Miklin. Really. That's going to let Stargaze go back. And you see now Lao uh, with this inkjet kind of popping in an awkward spot maybe. It's going to go down to that Ray, unfortunately. And you have Asteroid getting another pick with the Ray. And that's three down for Mifflin. This might be the snowball I was talking about. And once they get past the second checkpoint, it's really hard to come back from it. They have to push it and get the kills that they need, though. And you see they're trying to find resistance. And they do get two down inside of Stargate. Yeah, you hear though with this machine, able to get one before he goes down. Uh, Vester definitely going to back up as JB, JB does jump in and Fortune goes down. But now, uh, Micklin's going to have to go past two checkpoints and a little bit more as for the first few minutes of this game, it has been just Stargaze. And Lau here now popping his ink gem, maybe looking for a pick on the charge who is going to have to jump out to save his race. Smart play by him. He picking off that uh, ink jet there, you know, he has been having a game and honestly he's been having a set today. He here on this machine and now maybe look for another does come from his teammate to get that tri launcher down is gonna push up on the, to the tower maybe try to get lex here that he's on that 52. maybe gonna get away from him but wait the, the junior does go down with the help of Yeet there and now I mean, we just see again stargaze just has this control they're able to get that one pick that lets them come back in all the time we see right now it is 3v3 on the map. It's a little more equal here, but you see that there's a lot of pain for Stargaze. They have the opportunities they need, and they they just keep getting the kills, and it's just Mickelin is trying to find it, but they just seem to shut down all of a sudden. And it's still pretty equal on the map, and the armor coming from Mickelin, that's going to give them the chance they need. And it's just the trouble is with, you know, that Charger is just providing the stability that they need. You know, Stargaze and the machine, of course. But well, you see the great ancient shot there from Lau. That could give them the opportunity to use that machine down. Mm, definitely, though, Ray coming out from Vesta. So this is going to definitely stall out that push for Yeet to come back. Rain, though, coming out from Fear. This, you know, right now, Micklingers is just going to have to push. They don't really have much of a choice because they can't just let his Stargaze come back in. As I say that, they are going to get that second checkpoint. Throwing out that Blue Bomb to push them back. Three right now on the tower for Micklin Heroes. Cat's going to go down to that tower, unfortunately. Fear and Lex going to push them behind. Pick some picks. Wow, you you give them the jet. That's the wipe they needed. This might be the flip. Wipe. And this is going to be a lead flip possibly coming for Micklin Heroes. It's right now Stargate. We'll be able to get back here in time. Vesco going to get two picks with that charge. Vesco getting the kill to stop that push. It's just loud. And that's essentially a wipe. He's going to get a trail on J uh, JB though. But that game just getting flipped like that. Wow, with those picks. Just helping him get, helping the, you know, Mickleiners get that lead there. And now Stargaze themselves is going to have to get all the way back to that checkpoint, get some points on it too. And 
This is gonna be very difficult for them, but not impossible as they already get a pick on that machine. Uh, sorry, the junior and the try as now it's unfortunate to situation with Lau and this not here. He's been doing pretty much as much work as he has been doing for Stargaze for Mifflin here. And he's trying to get his jet possibly for defense as there's only 35 seconds, Lumi. This is really look this is looking really tough for Stargaze. I mean, seriously, I mean, you see they do have two specials to go in with, but, you know, Ray and the flash down is not going to start your push. It's going to keep it going. And, and they're having trouble just getting the control they need in the foothold to start their push. Mm -hmm. You know, right now there is only 15 seconds left. He is going to go down, but Fear's going to go down as well. Right now, 3-3 three, three situation for pretty much these last 10 seconds. But with this armor, is going to have to find a way to get his team in with that paint. It's going to up to this right stack as the no one's on tower right now. I picked as so loud. That's what they need to get past that first checkpoint. Uh, for, oh, wait. The, the inkjet picks. Uh, the GG Booyah is going to just end it. Yeah, the Booyah bomb coming in, making basically forcing uh, Stargaze to get off that tower, just move away from it. And are going to Hero is going to come in and just take it. And, you know... Honestly, that pretty much the first three, four minutes of that game just was a whole Stargaze, but Mickland then Lau especially just turned it around completely to take that lead. And you know, Ooh. Luke, you're just watching. That's pretty <laughs> crazy, huh? I was, dude, that was a crazy game. I mean, single-handedly, Lau or Lauo, whatever his name is, just won them that game because they had no right getting that push that far and until he got that triple i mean that wiped out stargaze and without it i don't think they would have made it even past that second checkpoint there so congrats to him that that was a clutch moment i was getting ready to talk about how well stargaze was playing and then all of a sudden boom triple kill game flipped ggs right there yeah and now we see stargaze is on this back foot you know they're down basically they're down to one you know, if they want to win this, they got to win two in a row, which isn't the best situation to be in, especially against a team like Micklin Heroes. Micklin Heroes goes off momentum so, so hard. And, you know, right, especially after that triple Lao guy, like, he's definitely hyped to just keep going with that momentum, you know. But if pretty much I think uh, Stargaze wants to win this set, you know, the first thing you have to make sure they don't let, you know, Lao do something like that again. But, you know, second of all, I think uh, they they are enabling Yi because Yi is getting some really good picks, but I feel like they're not enabling a J JB as much. You know, JB trying to get some stuff done sometimes, but we just see him uh, die pretty much on most of his inkjets and kind of going down when he tries to push in. So it seems like they try to JB needs to either work with his team more, or you know, his team needs to work with him more to try to enable him more. Because if JB and Yi can play together. You know, that can definitely help Stargaze to put even more pressure and possibly, yeah. like, actually take this to a game five. Well, and we got some crazy news here. After that pop off triple kill, unfortunately, Laoao has to go and they are subbing in a player named NWL E Ride. So I don't know exactly who that is. But uh, that is, I believe, Darley from Nawal Gaming, actually. Yeah, Darley is, uh, is what Micklin says who it is. So mm -hmm. uh, do you know much about this player, IPS? Uh, Nawal Gaming is a, another mid-level team. They're based, uh, pretty much when Nawal Gaming and Mythclan were both, like, insanely active, they're kind of the two Latin American teams that used to, you know, but had a lot, like, pretty much the two best uh, mid-level Latin American teams. And, you know, Nawal is definitely good in their own right, especially Darley. So, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately for Lao to have to go after that really good clutch there, but Darley definitely not a bad sub-eater. So, um... You know, Micklin Hero still up that 2-1, you know, still with a good sub. So we're going to have to see here if Stargate's going to maybe take advantage of that sub even then because maybe coordination might be a little bit different. Yeah, Lumi, we got 25 seconds till game four. What does Stargate need to do to push us to game five here? I think they need to really rely on the beginning of this match to get their push going. I mean, if you have a sub coming in, they have to go back to that feeling out phase. See, the first match of all our sets, the teams feel each other out. And if you have a sub coming in, you have to take advantage of that new discrepancy because within minutes, I mean, Micklin is going to go back to their aggression and their like really good plays that have shut down Stargates. So they need to try and capitalize off of this small weakness while they can. Yeah, well, it's been a good series so far. Let's see if we can get a game five out of this best of five. Stargates will need a win to do that. We are ready for game number four. So take it away, IPS and Lumi. Right, going into Splat Zone Starfish, the second Splat Zone map 
of this map list. Woo! And we have a DC. Okay, well, that's a great start. <laughs> <laughs> not, not much to say about that. <laughs> yep. At least we got to see them disappear. That was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, magic trick. They got a replay anyway. It's not the end of the world, you know? <laughs> Zach, have you ever seen such a beautiful magic trick come out before? Oh, dude. That's, that's how you win games, dude. That's how you get it done. Maybe they didn't dis disappear. Maybe they didn't DC. Maybe they disappeared and they're going to flank the team. I mean... It's, it's like an invincibility cloak. Oh, this is oh, starfish. Oh, Wouldn't be surprised. They reconnect halfway through. Oh my word! <laughs> That's like Randy Orton at the Royal Rumble in 2018. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's exactly what everyone thinks of. Oh well, we have a knockout coming here from Stargate, so shouldn't uh, shouldn't be too long till we get the the reset up. But man, that was a perfect timing right as the game starts you know if you're gonna dc might as well do it at the beginning right why not why not simply epic all right well while we wait we have a follow coming in from tasty dirty sock so <laughs> well, that's, that's a that's a big, right now interesting <laughs> that might be one of the best follows we've had so far i don't know <laughs> Well, while we get this uh, set back up, I do want to take a second to just say thank you to the viewers who have helped support this league and to those who have donated. Much love to you guys adding to the prize pool. But as well, thank you guys for those new follows. We are on our way to the goal of 600. So uh, we, we started this season saying, hey, we're at 400. Let's hit 500. And then there we go. Another one. Bada splat. Badat. Badat splat. Badat splat. Badat splat. It's bad at splat. Bad at splat. All right. Well, I, was try I tried three different ways, and IPS coming out with the clutch fourth way. And another one X Man Salt BC Twitch sucks. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what are with these names today? I don't know, man. I really do not know. <laughs> great stuff. Great stuff. But, anyways, as I was saying, thank you guys for the follows. And another one Angry Cat. Getting us closer and closer to that 600 mark. We literally started the season saying, hey, let's get to 500. And now partway through season three, we're already saying, hey, let's, sh let's shoot for 600. So, Zach, how are you feeling as co-founder of WTP? How are you feeling about possibly hitting 600 this season? You know, actually, I just got a huge payout from Twitch. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling did. good. I did. I did. Um it was weird because it came in my bank account as something else, but it was fourteen hundred dollar payout. Twitch, <laughs> pretty cool. All right, you mean a paycheck say, man. from your well, actual no, job? No, no, no. So I don't really yeah. care. I don't really care about the followers. I just care about this huge yeah. money I'm yeah. making. Yo, yo, Zach. It's not Zach, about the people. It's about capitalism, baby. Zach, let me guess what you're gonna do with that money. You're gonna. Get yeah, official merch for our well gang is sent to all of them, huh? Oh, yeah. That's the plan, baby. <laughs> did you see their win yesterday? Yeah, of course I did. I would never miss an a well gang game. Yeah. None of us saw you in the chat. Uh, I was watching from afar. <clears throat> Show uh, Show you what, what was the Show score line? <laughs> what was the score? Uh, uh, it was 3-1 a well gang. All right, all right, fair so enough. So against two, against two. Uh, against uh, Tent Supremacy. Wow, okay. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Fair hey! Enough, fair enough. hey! <laughs> All right, well, we're getting uh, a little bit of a delay from Micklin to see if we can get them back in here. But, yeah, if you guys haven't checked out the amateur scene yet, it's, it's pretty popping. We got two weeks of regular season left. So the playoff race is getting tight, especially for that number four spot. So, Zach, as the OO gang fanboy... Seeing them win yesterday, what are their chances now to make it to playoffs? Oh, come on. Do you even have to ask me? Do you even have to ask? They're taking it. They're getting the merch made for them. So excited to buy an Awol Gang shirt. That beautiful beach logo. It's going to be <laughs> so sexy. Uh, of course, they're taking the whole league, guys. Come on. All right. 100%. Yeah, 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 100%. All right. Was, let's just forget about Zylo, guys. They don't exist. You know, don't nope, worry about it. Never heard of them. Yeah. They're, uh, they're nobody's. Nobody. Sure. I cannot wait for next week. I cannot wait. IPS, what are you going to do with your stimulus money? 
<laughs> He's not I have American. no idea. Look yeah. what are you doing with your stimulus money? Uh, buying apparently a buying a obo gang hoodie. Oh yeah! Oh thank God! <laughs> Let's go. You oh, know, man. I'm DM Neo Slayer from uh, Zylo. And I told him, you know, if you guys win the league, I'm gonna use my uh, ten thousand channel points to get merch made for you guys. You know, merch put on the store. Yeah. So yeah. they got that motivation to win because I'm saving my channel points now. I'm not really gambling more than like you know a hundred or so each time. Well, you can know, I get can I get my stimulus paid out in Twitch points? Channel, channel points? points, yeah, totally. <laughs> That'd be cool. You know, Zylo has a pretty cool logo for the Northwest. It's got the those evergreen trees. Yeah, I feel like it is hot. actually for Zach and me. Perfect. It'd be a very like band shirt, I think. It's hot. Yeah, like a WTP uh, logo tier list. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Man, yeah, you could actually do a lot with that. That'd be a fun stream. Lumi, what are you doing with your stimulus money? I mean, I don't know. Probably going to buy 10 OO gang hoodies. You know, never. I can't believe I got everybody in on this. Thank God. I can I'm believe so, it. I am not in on this, by the way. Come on. <laughs> Me and IPS is the feud. I'm tired of it. Uh, yeah. Um, we'll, you don't worry. You'll end next week when Xylo 3 is awoken. You know? Because it's going to happen. I don't think that ends our feud. Oh, yeah, right. It's going to end when we see our woe gang not making playoffs. Yeah, that, that's... <laughs> oh, stop it! All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, guys, it sounds like... Uh, uh, Cass is having some real internet issues. We're going to take just a, a short break again just to see if we can get a sub in here to finish the series. It'd be a sad day not to be able to finish it. It's been hyped so far. So of course, of course. Give us a couple minute break. We'll try to get things settled, but it sounds like more than just a simple DC. So we'll see what happens and just stick around and hopefully we get a chance to end this series uh, because Micklin is up two to one right now over Stargaze, just needing one more win. So we'll, we'll get things going and, and see if we can get things squared away in Micklin back with four players. So see you guys in just a moment.
All right, everybody, we are back and getting some action of Splatoon again once and for all. We will finish this series, gosh dang it, one way or another. <laughs> there is apparently heavy rain for Micklin's Captain Cass, and they are losing internet connection. So a few emergency subs coming in here. We have for Micklin Fear. E-Ride, Wander, and Azen playing now against Stargaze. Looking for one more win to push them uh, further into the tournament. So IPS, as we have one minute till they, they choose all their weapons, can you tell us about these other players at all? Well, two Norwalk game members, again, I already, earlier said about Norwalk. You know, strong players, pretty much on the same level as Micklin. So, you know, they're also, I believe they've talked to each other before. I think they're good friends. I'm not sure, but definitely rivals at least so so you know definitely good players then uh on the other hand we have uh sharp point uh dario or wonder um of course remember shadow point which is a french team uh and he himself is a pretty strong uh player pretty strong french player so you know pretty much still same level of strength as micklin you know maybe they might not have the same synergy but we'll see here now yeah all right, well, we are 10 seconds away. We'll see if Micklin can actually pull this off. We'll see if their team can be coordinated enough, even with these emergency subs, or will Stargaze push us to that game five? So we are ready. Let's get underway for some more Splatoon action. We are going to Starfish main stage Splat Zones for game number four. So on Starfish Zones here, we see both comps coming out from both teams. On the side of Micklin Heroes, uh, we see Machine coming out from Aizen. We see uh, Baldwin coming from E-Ride. We see um, Dario on that zap. Finally, Fear on that K-Shot. So a pretty actual standard shooter kind comp, uh, of course, with the except for the Machine. Uh, you know, pretty standard stuff. You know, on the side of... Uh, Stargaze, we see that splat and a Neo Splash and that Booyah Bomb uh, K52. So, definitely gonna be looking for more of that paint type specials for the side of the Stargaze. Meanwhile, it seems like Micklin is more opting for kills. You know? Uh, so, as right now, we see that Stargaze does get the first control of the game as Fear already gets a pick there on uh, Yeet there. So, this might flip over, and Lumi right now kind of seems like kind of a stalemate. I mean, yeah, you see, it's flipping back and forth. It's not really one person dominating, but right now, there is a bit of an advantage for Micklon right now. You see, they have good paint and, like, but, you see, Jamie might get picked here, but here are doing a good job of just holding down the, the zone. And the missile coming out is just going to make it even harder. Yeah, we see now still control on these side Micklon heroes. Unfortunately, that JB went down that shark with that fierce good reaction time and E Ride with this ball point putting pressure on that other side. He's gonna try to go for a flank, but you know, Micklin's gonna know he's there, so will he be able to get anything done? And he goes to three of them in armor coming out from Micklin. He goes down to Aizen, and right now, with a 4v3 uh, situation with the zone ticking down below 20, Pick coming in from Squib there with the bomb. Maybe help can help his teammates get into zone here and get the cap they need, but Zap also coming down. Zap coming out from where he spawned, and zone still for Zap Micklin Heroes. Now ticking below 15, Yeet going down through a few situations. This is the last hoorah for Stargaze to get in here. And Squip with that armor nearly at the ready. Not going to pop in, instead off the paint zone. Pretty smart play, but unfortunately, picks coming from my right there. And that's going to be it. And Micklin Heroes is going to take the set 3 to 1. All right, that is the match. That is the set. A uh, very weird set here with a bunch of mm -hmm. subs coming out from Micklin. But you know what can you do when you <laughs> when you have weather problems and you are trying to figure it out? And you know there's not much that you can do with a land tournament or a non-land tournament when there are internet issues. So Micklin still getting the win though with those other players and their emergency subs. So. GG's and um, you know luckily for Stargaze they do have another chance they don't get eliminated from the tournament completely they do get to play through the lower bracket and still have a shot at glory a shot at money so it is going to be okay for them they will hopefully learn from this and continue to grow as a team we saw some great action out from them earlier 
uh, especially from Yeet, I would say has been popping off during the set. So uh, congrats to Micklin. They are going to be moving on. But uh, for now, we are going to take a quick break so that we can actually get set up for Jackpot and Squid and Good coming up here in a few moments. So stay tuned for more action here and we will see you guys.